When I became head of English, um, one, I got a bit crazy with power for a while. Um, and then I realised actually suddenly everyone was allowing me to do exactly what I want, so I really ought to have a plan. Uh, and I needed to know what I wanted, the students I worked with to walk away with. And I was very aware that my previous school had had Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4, and they seemed to be two very alien creatures to each other. We had fun at Key Stage 3, and then the kids hated us at Key Stage 4, and that's kind of how we just lived with it. Uh, and it just seemed uh, nonsense to me. And what you needed was actually a 7 to 11 curriculum. You needed um, them to come in in year 7, knowing what you wanted in year 11, and then you built a picture towards that. And then I realised I had two choices. I could be um, an idealist and I could try and uh, save the world um, and give it a good shot. Or I could be a pragmatist and realise, you know, I was in the business of getting results. Um, so I tried idealist first because, you know, I was six years younger than I am now and it ages you quick being head of English. So... Um, and it's actually quite true what that sign says. As long as I stopped paying attention, idealism felt brilliant. So we just had quite a lot of fun and we did stuff that was uh, important to us and we played a little bit in the classroom. And that actually summed up most of my teaching career before I was middle leadership, to be fair. I just had fun and hoped it worked. But then um, Mr Scott happened, um, my head teacher, uh, and he had a more pragmatic approach to it in as much as the idea that he wanted results from me and he quite liked the colour sort of like red not the colour blue in the raise online booklet so he wanted me to get significantly above um, expected achievement not significantly below, below. But I personally quite like the colour blue I don't know what his point um, but the point being then is you can get quite horribly caught in some sort of dogma, a dogmatic situation where all you uh, are thinking about is the CD borderline student, the student that's not making two levels of progress yet, why aren't they doing that? Uh, and just getting kind of carried away with the numbers and the spreadsheet making and the colour coding and forgetting actually the bit where you're meant to be, you know, talking to these sort of peeps. Oh my God. Um, so I had idea number one. Do I, do I just get carried away with results? Do I just go, right, it's all about the results. The kids will thank me anyway. They want a grade as much as I want them to get a grade. It's a win-win situation. Or do I actually make them think? I know. Um, so do I teach them things? And at the moment, I'm working quite hard to try and bring in some metacognitive work so that we can get children to not only think about what they're doing, but also think about how they're thinking about what they're doing. Crazy. Get carried away. Uh, or do we kind of like think of the whole child where we think, actually, we need their emotional, their spiritual, their cultural. I can't teach Britishness. I'm from Grimsby, so they're stuffed there. Um, or do we t try and take the whole lot? And then we have the things that become um, sort of like fads of the time. Do I just focus on spelling, punctuation and grammar because I'm an English teacher and teach a Coco's in Taunton that you entries doesn't need an apostrophe and who needs three exclamation marks after three? Um, do I teach this man about communication who was talking about clarity in the most long-winded and stupidly complex way ever? And there lies irony. Or do I teach them how to be a learner um, do I teach them to become their own English teacher so they don't need me anymore, so they become their own expert? Or do I, you know, go crazy and all idealistic again and try and make them creative and actually have a bit of fun in my room? Or is it my job to make them emotionally intelligent, in other words, so that they grow up to be reasonable human beings who care for others and not harm others? So what we do then is we design a Key Stage 3 curriculum that leads into our Key Stage 4. And what I'm going to do now is give you some ideas about the sort of decisions we made. So Apprentice is one of our units where they write a letter to a, a, a famous businessman and ask him to give them money to get their idea off the ground. Where we teach them about the idea of the workplace, a practical application of English. They are forced to deal with SPAG there. They have to get it accurate. Then we had a unit called Minority Voice, we still do, where we look at 
uh, 1960s America and the rise of um, Martin Luther King and how he used English powerfully to make a change. So they understood the value of English to bring power to a cause. Then we brought in animation because actually students have got no idea how much they're manipulated in the world and we teach them that Disney is actually propaganda and it's the idea of teaching the American dream that you don't have to be rich and marry somebody good looking in order to be happy in the end and we try and uh, pervert their understanding and allow them to bring gay people into animations you know and ugly people aren't necessarily evil thankfully for me so we're all okay. Um, then we teach them gothic short stories because at GCSE they ha we, we teach women in black. So part of our units are all about <coughs> apprenticing them for the key stage four. And then we do something crazy where we don't teach English at all. We teach thinking skills and we make them ask if questions. And we don't tell them what the outcome is. And we tell them that they can make whatever outcome they like for whatever question they ask. And then we just teach them how to do that. So we teach them group skills, we teach them presentation skills. Um, and where I want to leave you is this. So I started my journey as a head of English asking the question of where, what do I want my punchline to be? Uh, and, the qu and I started on the road of a 7 to an 11 curriculum, but that's actually now, I realise, quite short-sighted because I need a year one through to probably a year 13 plus curriculum if our arrow is going to follow a straight line while we're aiming for our target. Thank you very much.